In this video, I'll show how to add buttons to a Turner G i6 radio. Shown on the right here is the way the radio looks when you receive it. This is two joysticks. Most battlers will use the left joystick for throttle and then rudder. And then they'll use the right position for guns. In order to fire the guns quickly, many battlers will replace the joystick with buttons which allows a single direct pulse to the solenoids which allows firing faster and then more reliably. Uh, steps to do this you'll need a insert or a mount or something so I've printed a mount which will go in the location of the joystick to hold the buttons. Uh, for buttons I use these um, C and K buttons there. Um, there are many, many buttons that are similar, so you can shop around. These ones are very expensive. The buttons cost about as much as the radio. But what you want in a button is a small amount. You need to depress it, um, and then with a little force, or small force. Uh, and then also you'll need some resistors. The resistors will be used to create a voltage divider for the buttons to work, and will replace the potentiometers that are in the um, in the joystick. Okay, um, steps I'll do once I have my mount I will drill some holes for the buttons. I'll put the buttons in and then I will wire them up outside the radio and then I'll take the radio and remove the joystick um, cut the wires and then solder the wires from the buttons into the radio and then test it out. When I add the switches you can see there's three pins in the bottom so those pins are common which is all the way on the right normally open which is in the middle and normally closed which is on the left so when the button is not pressed, there is connectivity between normally closed and common. And then when the button's depressed, there's connectivity between normally open and common. So what we'll do is we're going to put a resistor between normally open and common. And then we'll do this with two buttons in a row. So you'll end up with a voltage divider and you'll have a positive wire on one end and a negative wire on the other end and then the signal wire coming off the middle with neither button depressed with the resistors being the same value the signal wire will get half the voltage between positive and negative negative. and by pressing one or the other button it will short out the resistor on that button and set the voltage to either the negative value or the positive value. From a radio's perspective, when the voltage is equal with neither button depressed, that simulates a neutral position, and then pushing one button or the other button simulates a 100% in either direction signal. So when I install the buttons, I'm going to want to make sure the common, which is on the left, or sorry, on the right, is towards the middle because um, that will make the wiring easier. I mounted the switches. As you see there, put some Loctite just so they don't loosen up. And then I wrapped the resistors around the pegs and put a little bit of flux on there. And now I'll solder these. Also prepared two wires. This is a servo lead. So those will be my signal wires, which will go between the two switches. So now I will very quickly solder the resistors on and tin the wire and wrap the wire around. When doing this, I don't want to apply solder for too long on the switches as it can melt and damage the switches. The first switch is soldered with the connecting wire there. 
So I wrapped it around, and then now I'll do the second one. Okay, just real quick. So that first one is attached, and then I'm going to wrap it around the second post. Perfect, but it's on there. So now I'll set up to do the positive and negative wires. So there's the last black wire here. All right. Looks okay. I'm going to be really quick with the soldering iron so you don't melt the switches. Test the switches, they still work. And so now I'm going to solder the black wires together. So I'll have a single negative and the red ones for a single positive. The white ones will be separate because those will be the two signal wires. I'll show just soldering the Y together. So I'll strip the end of one wire and then a midsection another one and then wrap the two wires around each other. Put a little flux on there and then I'll just quickly hit it with the soldering iron. Okay, and then cover that with shrink tubing. And then the wiring here is about done, so we'll move to the radio portion. Moving to the radio portion, first I'll remove the batteries so there's no power when I take it apart, and then I'll remove the four screws. That allows opening the case up. Okay, the case comes out pretty easily, and then I'll typically unplug these connectors so I can take the back completely off. Okay, the back's removed. Ended up just unscrewing this connection from the other side because it was easier than pulling out that connector. So now I'll remove the joystick. So there's just four screws. You can see them in the corners there. And that'll allow the joystick to remove. And then the wire connection is on the side here. So we'll remove that. And then you'll have these four wires right here, which will be your positive, negative, and two signals. I removed the four screws for the joystick and then undid the connector on the side there. And then I'll end up cutting these wires because I'll have to attach these wires to the buttons. So next step, I'll take my buttons, I'll probably, I have holes printed in, but I'll probably drill those out, and then I will mount the button plate. Um, different radios will have different hole, I don't know, they'll have different hole spacing, and then they'll have different distance from these, like, studs to the front plate. So that's why I printed this to the exact dimensions so it fits. Uh, if you're doing it on a different radio, the dimensions will obviously be different. Some radios you can just do a flat piece across here and just mount the buttons to the back, but it'll depend on the radio. Mounted the button plate. Let's see the 
front side lines up quite nicely. It's fairly, uh, fairly sturdy. Uh, so now what I'll do, I'm going to go back to my wiring diagram and identify which wire is which. So this connector you see there's two black and two white and what we're looking for there'll be a positive, a negative, and then two signal wires. And then through doing this in the past in troubleshooting on the radio, one black is either positive or negative and one's a signal and then same with the whites which is a bit counterintuitive because when I first started trying to wire this radio I thought either both blacks would be the signals or both whites would be the signals but it's, it's not true. So what I'll do is I'm going to pull out a guide I made in the past and confirm the wires and make sure I know which wire is which and then I will solder them to the wires from the buttons and you can see with the buttons mounted in here there's a lot less access which is why I do the resistor wiring and then those signal wirings before I put in the radio because it makes it much easier to access than having to deal with the radio as well when trying to do the soldering. Here is a wiring diagram I drew up so you can see the wiring we already did where you have the commons in the middle and then the resistor between the common and only open typically in the past I've used 2.2 K ohm resistors in this case there are four K ohm resistors so we'll see how it works and then the negatives and the positives are connected and then I show on the radio board connector the sequence of the wires so the first black wire from the left will be the negative and then the white will be the first signal and then the second black one will be the second signal and then the last white will be the positive so I will now make those connections solder the wires together so you can see the leftmost black one is going to the negatives and the next white right here is going to one signal wire and then the black is going to the next signal wire and then the last white is going to the positive now which signal wire you choose doesn't really matter you can one will go to channel one the other one will go to channel two so now I will melt the heat shrink and test it out turn the radio on and now I'm going to check if the buttons are working correctly. So I'll go to the function setup and then display. And then I'm looking at channel 1 and 2. So you can see as I press the button, it goes channel 1 one way, and then I press the opposite button, channel 1 the other, and then same for channel 2 one way and the other. So it looks like it is working well. Keys here are don't push two opposing buttons at the same time because you'll effectively short the radio out. These radios will just quickly reboot but you risk damaging the radio and if in the middle of battle it's not a good thing. So now I'll just screw the radio back together and then I'll put little caps on but this button conversion is done hope this video was helpful thanks for watching